I'm coming to you today from the Word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm reading from the book of Amos chapter 2, 1 Chronicles 27, and Acts chapter 17. Amos chapter 2, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Moab, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. But I will send a fire upon Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kirioth, and Moab shall die with tumult, with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof, and will slay all the princes thereof with him, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Judah, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have despised the law of the Lord, and have not kept his commandments, and their lies caused them to err, after the which their fathers have walked. But I will send a fire upon Judah, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they sold the righteous for silver, and the poor for a pair of shoes. That pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor, and turn aside the way of the meek, and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid to profane my holy name. And they lay themselves down upon clothes laid to pledge by every altar, and they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised up of your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy not. Behold, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore the flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his force, neither shall the mighty deliver himself, neither shall he stand that handleth the bow, and he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself, neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself, and he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, saith the Lord. First Chronicles 27. Now the children of Israel, after their number, to wit, the chief fathers and captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers that served the king in any matter of the courses, which came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year, of every course were twenty and four thousand. Over the first course of the first month was Jezebim, the son of Zabdiel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Of the children of Perez was the chief of all the captains of the host for the first month. And over the course of the second month was Dodai the Ahohite, and of his course was Mikloth also the ruler. In his course likewise were twenty and four thousand. The third captain of the host for the third month was Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, a chief priest. And in his course were twenty and four thousand. This is that Benaiah, who was mighty among the thirty, and above the thirty, and in his course was Amizabad his son. The fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Zebediah his son after him, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The fifth captain for the fifth month was Shamhu the Israelite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The sixth captain for the sixth month was Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helaz the Pelonite, of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eighth captain for the eighth month was Sibachai the Hushathite, of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abiezer the Anethathite, 
of the Benjamites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The tenth captain for the tenth month was Maharai the Netophathite of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eleventh captain for the eleventh month was Benaiah the Perithonite of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The twelfth captain for the twelfth month was Heldai the Netophathite of Othniel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the ruler of the Reubenites was Eliezer, the son of Zechariah of the Simeonites, Shephatiah, the son of Maacah, of the Levites, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, of the Aaronites, Zadok, of Judah, Elihu, one of the brethren of David, of Issachar, Amri, the son of Michael, of Zebulun, Ishmael, the son of Obadiah, of Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael, of the children of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Azaziah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Padiah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo, the son of Zechariah, of Benjamin, Jael, the son of Abner, of Dan, Azareel, the son of Jeroham, these were the princes of the tribes of Israel. But David took not the number of them from 20 years old and under, because the Lord had said he would increase Israel like to the stars of the heavens. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began to number, but he finished not, because there fell wrath for it against Israel. Neither was the number put in the account of the chronicles of King David. And over the king's treasures was Azmaveth, the son of Adiel. And over the storehouses in the fields and the cities and in the villages and in the castles was Jehonathan, the son of Uzziah. And over them that did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri, the son of Chelub. And over the vineyards was Shimei, the Ramathite, over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zapdai the Shifmite. And over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the low plains was Baal Hanan the Gedarite. And over the cellars of oil was Joash. And over the herds that fed in Sharon was Shitri the Sharonite. And over the herds that were in the valleys was Shaphat the son of Adlai. And over the camels also was Obil the Ishmaelite, and over the asses was Jediah the Moronathite, and over the flocks was Jazes the Hagarite. All these were rulers of the substance which was King David's. Also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man and a scribe, and Jehiel the son of Hakmoni was with the king's sons, and Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai the archite was the king's companion. And after Ahithophel was Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar, and the general of the king's army was Joab. Acts chapter 17. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, 
they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus, for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Eropagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars' hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Theonysius the Oropagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them.